It is June of 1958, three years after my Chris Craft Sea Skiff, unbeknownst, was produced. This postcard was sent from Shermerhorn's Landing on Chippewa Bay, where my St. Lawrence skiff is docked. This was a time where running water and a toilet in the cabin was a big deal and news to send home. I believe this camp is where the restaurant is now. This is the road up the hill and there is still a camp here. Maybe the same one? Chippewa Bay people, let me know what you think. I'm Scott Odekirk and this is the Wooden Boat Experience. My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat. Arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this. The Wooden Boat Experience. I did manage to get more done on the addition, covering up more of the walls, putting up a 2x6 beam, which will help when I open up that silver foiled area there next to the door. All that's going to be open eventually. A little bit more of the ceiling covered. Original battens put back in to make that blue area look nice. And I also rebuilt this short wall that was left after I opened up the area next to the wood stove. Used some old barn wood that I had peeled off the walls from the area I took away. And then on the back side of this wall is where the kiln is going to go. It is Tuesday afternoon. You can hear the geese going over. We get a lot of them here. They go to the field across the road and then down to the river. It's not a very long flight. They just keep going back and forth. So I am happy to be back in the boat finally after flipping it over last week. I got a couple things I want to get done this week. I want this back in, which goes here, holds up the floors. I want to put all, I want to cut white oak for all these sections here that go across and hold the floors up. They're the floor beams, I guess you'd call them. And I also want to get those ribs and sawn frames up in the front put in and get that area buttoned up, get the lifting eye in place. Um, I think that would be pretty good. I, I got about an hour and a half or so left today. And then I'm going to spend a lot more time out here tomorrow on Wednesday and maybe a little Thursday morning before I edit. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'm going to put you guys on time lapse and you can watch me. I think this got pulled out pretty early in the process and never really got scraped or cleaned off. The whole, the other three sides did, but the bottom didn't. I had to get it out of the way to put some of the ribs in on that side. The other issue with this is it was screwed, this is upside down, so it was sitting like this and it was screwed up through the ribs to hold this in place, but it was not through the strakes. So there's no way to get, short of pulling those strakes out of the way, you can't get those screws out out of the ribs and I can't put it back in that way without going all the way through the strakes which I don't want to do because the strakes have a gap in a lot of spots between the strake and the rib where the screws go through and I don't want to pull the strake up towards that and I don't want the head of the screw being pulled by the rib up through the strake so I think the best thing to do is to sort of toenail it into each rib and uh, not toe nail, but toe screw it into each rib. And then of course, when you have the frames going across, the supports for the frames, the beams that go across in each of these gaps here, they're made out of white oak and they're going to be screwed together. So the whole thing will be fairly solid once I do that. So a little off to the side, going back a touch. I'm going in at an angle and hopefully, yeah, we missed the screw because I would have heard it if I didn't. Little bit of paste wax. 
on the screw because it is going into oak. You don't want to snap it off, that would not be good. Down flush, that looks good. There's a screw still in this board, but there's nothing in the rib because it's a new rib. So I still got to go a little off to the side. Ah, uh, you can see, I think, that I touched that screw that was in there. See it on the side, um, but I think it'll be okay. Familiar with how this works, you've got the engine beds here and here, and then you've got these two outer, we'll call them floor beams, I guess. I don't know what I don't know what the name is for those. But you can see that each one is cut out, and so is the engine bed. And then a board will go right across like this. One, two, three, four spots, and then it runs out close to here. Probably touches this rib. If you get it just right, it'll touch that rib, support that end. Actually, I think there's a very small stringer, like the size of a rib, that runs parallel to the other stringers and the engine beds that holds that outside part of the floor. And then that sits flush with the top of this, so you have to make sure that whatever the thickness is here is brings it up to level with this. And then the plywood floor sits on top of all those things. And usually the joints in the pieces that come apart will be right on top of one of these beams that run perpendicular to the engine beds. It's a pretty effective system. It's a, it's a nice way to have a flat floor in what's definitely not a flat area. I mean, you can see that they taper, they're, they're skinnier down there. The engine beds get thickest in here and up towards the front. So you've got a hull that's going down this way and it's curved this way and somehow you need to make something that's flat. It must be a fun thing to figure out for the first person to figure it out. Luckily, I have the pieces and didn't have to make new ones because these are all in pretty good shape. I do have a couple little spots where, depending on how that engine sits in here, there's some spots that have been cut out and I may Dutchman in some pieces there, we'll see. Yeah, don't want any copyright infringement. So I had to get my custom white oak stereo stick out and turn the stereo off. It's annoying. I have to keep turning it off, but any music or radio in the background, and I might end up getting uh, the video taken off from YouTube. So we've still got a limber hole down here where this meets and we'll pull that together tight right there and that'll be one of the ribs in place we've been looking at the these unfinished holes in the boat for way too long and now we're finally going to deal with it we're below the water line so we will be doing everything here with silicone bronze hey speckles how are you going into the white oak so we'll use a little bit of wax on these using finishing paste wax I've got some other types of wax around you can also I've used hand soap for this too anything to give it a little lubrication you can put a lot of torque on a screw with these Um, first and heads so you want to give it a little lubrication so you don't snap something off I've been thinking a lot about the steering system my original plan was to use the original gearbox steering system with a pipe that goes down through the bilge and affects the rudder 
but I'm kind of thinking I'm not going to do that. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to go with uh, like a Teleflex type system. But we'll see. I'm doing a little research on that right now. All right, let's go put another rib on the inside. Well, that would explain why that one felt a little soft when it was going in. I thought maybe I wasn't using a long enough screw or something. But obviously, that missed the rib. So we are going to go out there and redo that. And then we're also going to put one more in here and make this uh, mechanical fastening with... Um, a machine screw. There, that feels a little bit more like it went into something. Now let's double check where that machine screw is going. And here I am realizing that I was one straight too high. Yeah, we might have done that wrong, people really hard to tell when you're out here sometimes what you're looking at in there. I wondered why that one was the one that looked like it was off and not the one where I was drilling. So we're going to have an extra screw there for no reason. Yep, that was it right there. Rats. Okay. This is where we need it. I'm sure a lot of you are going to say, oh, everybody knows that. But I know at one point I didn't know this. When you're using a chisel and you want to keep from digging in, take the angled part that's on the top of the chisel, turn it that way, and you can scrape things off and not dig in. If you come in this way, you're going to dig down into the wood. Sometimes you want to dig down into the wood, but in this case we don't. Hi, Circles. How are you? So we just got to make it just a little bit, oh you guys can't see that, a little bit longer up here. It's got the right angle on it because obviously it came out of here so it's the right piece. So this is a little punky down at the bottom, oh yeah, yeah it's out of here. This piece is punky in here. So we're going to use this as a pattern, but then we're going to take this top section because it's already got the angle and it's the pretty much the right height and everything. We're going to cut that off right about here and use this as the fish plate over here to tie the two together. So we'll make a new one and then we'll tie them together here. Now we don't care that the, th the thickness of this this way is exactly the same. That doesn't really matter. The faces need to meet. So we'll see what we got which is close to this and if we have to we'll run it through the planer to make it the same. It's not a big deal. We might as well make it the same if we can. Probably going to use white oak for this. That looks pretty good. It's a little longer like we need it to be. Let's go see if it fits. If you're gonna use something like this disc sander here to take just a little bit off. Now we wanted a little more off here than we did up here. You need to give yourself a line or something because 
it's really hard to tell. Did I take anything off or did I not? All of a sudden, there'll just be a bunch of it gone. So I gave myself a little line to go to. Yeah, it might be a little bit too much. So now I just left that line barely because I was a little heavy on how much I was going to take off with the line. Now normally I wouldn't want to burn the wood to look like that, but you're not going to see it. Okay, I am not going to screw these in until I put this fish plate across here. See that screw, I'm gonna to have to knock the fairing out of there. I hate to do it, but that screw is not in the right place. So probably what we'll do is actually screw into the fish plate out here, but I don't want that to affect how this goes together. Definitely would have had a problem with that screw going into this white oak without the wax. Some type of lubricant is very important when you're doing that, driving those silicone bronze into white oak. All right, we got quite a ways today. I would say I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. This board in, two ribs, a sawn frame. That one is all ready to be put in. I've got to make one for the other side. This one was in good enough shape to reuse. You can see that the shape is a little different down here, what I created, but that's going to be fine. I'm going to add another screw right here. I'm going to go down and do that right now. This will just allow the water to pass back and forth. I'm not going to worry about that. We added this, got this board back in. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Gotta lick, don't you? What if I lick you, huh? What if I decide to lick you? You'd like it, wouldn't you? You're weird. Let's go back in the boat shed for a minute. I've been working this morning and early afternoon. Come on, Speck. Get in here, buddy. I have been working in here. Let me switch you guys over. There we go. As you can see, doesn't look that much different from here than last week, but let's take a quick walk. It might be a little messier. My goodness, look at that workbench. Let's get up here. Hey, you can see that a lot of work has happened up in the bow. You're going to see more of that. I was lucky yesterday to just be in here working and had no clue what was going on until later in the afternoon. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we did this week, back to woodworking, back to basics. And I was happy to be woodworking again. It was a lot of fun. And you'll see that we used a new tool that we hadn't used in here before. The boat is coming along. Today is Thursday. I should probably be in there editing, but I wanted to do some more work on the boat and get some more footage to put on this week's video. So... On Wednesday, we redid this piece and bolted it in place. We made these two ribs, cut out this sawn frame and this section of sawn frame, replaced this one, which um, 
put this back in, which did not need to be replaced. It was still good. And today I want to cut these two ribs and this sawn frame. But yesterday I cut these two with a jigsaw and a handsaw. And I cut the scarfs on these two pieces of ribs with a handsaw. And then I realized, hey, Andy Derby brought me a bandsaw. What the heck am I doing? So today I'm going to cut this one out right here and these two scarfs with a bandsaw. And let's see how much time it saves me and how much easier it is. And then I'll realize, do I really need to get a big bandsaw? Maybe the little bandsaw Andy um, brought me could be used in the skiff house and the big one could be used in here. But let's go work on this sawn frame and see what we think. A bandsaw, definitely when you're using it, doesn't feel as scary as a table saw. It's not as loud. Um, you don't see that huge spinning blade. But remember when you use these that you do want to be careful because this is how they cut up your meat at a butcher shop. So it is very effective at cutting a person. It is nice to have a planer around. That made quick work of making that smooth. Excellent, let's go check it out and see how it fits. Okay, now we just need to trim this section right here at an angle so it can rest on top of this. All right, I'm sorry it's too late. I'm too tired. Here's what it looked like Thursday afternoon when I was done. I'll see you next week on the WBE. One of these days I'm gonna figure this thing out. There we go. The key is if you're ugly, put a good looking boat in the background.